This video tutorial is part one of a toolbars palette series that we will be providing to go into more depth and detail on each of the tools available on the Fusion toolbar. The first of these that we'll be covering is the information palette. The information palette will give you certain information on a single selected item. You'll notice without any object selected in the design, the information palette is grayed out. If I select more than one object in the design, it remains grayed out. You will only be able to see information of an object if a single object is selected. With the object selected, we can see which catalog it comes from, what the unit name is of the unit, and the description of the unit. We have an option to change description type. Currently only recommended is available for this particular unit. If we select the edit button, this allows us to edit the description. So we could add, say for instance, one shelf to our description. Click OK. And if we go to our item list, we'll see the new edited description available. The show alert message, if we click on this, will tell us something that has changed with the particular unit. In this case, it holds a different description to that within the catalog. If we were to change the height of this unit to 900 and click on this alert message, it tells us that it has a different dimension and different description to that held within the catalog. The third button, planning text information, is only available on certain units. Moving on to these three icons over here. The first of these, which is selected by default, will present you with the length, depth and height of the unit that you can edit. So we can change our unit from 1 meter to 800 and we'll see the results within the elevation view. Separate order dimensions, by selecting this button, we can create a new order dimension for a particular unit without changing its graphical size. We can also amend pricing inside this window and also set an item to be non-priced. Setting an object's layer will allow you to change the layer of a particular unit if you wish not to see it by hiding certain other units. So if I select this unit to be associated with our floor base units, open our layer control window and hide floor base units, we'll note that that unit is hidden along with our floor base. By changing the report category, we are able to change this unit so that it falls under different reports than its default. We, all, we can also have control over the dimension type, whether it by default is a wall unit, or if we change it to base unit, we'll see that this new dimension falls within the 800 on the base unit dimension line. If it is a single unit with one door, we can change whether it is left or right handed. If the unit is locked, by locking it, we are unable to move the objects inside the room. And we can also change its visibility in the plan elevation and perspective view. Let's go to plan view to see how the snap to wall orientation works. By turning off snap to wall orientation, if we take this unit and move it with our mouse, we'll see that it no longer snaps to the orientation of the wall that we are trying to place it onto. By turning this back on, this feature now works as we would be accustomed to it. Moving on to the second icon. This icon controls the auto feature flags for a particular unit. If I wish not for this unit to receive a permit, I just need to deselect that. Run auto features. And we'll see as it runs through, it places the permit on the two units selected next to it, but not on the middle unit that we turn this feature off for. The final button in the information palette is the unit properties. By opening the unit properties dialog, we can control certain elements of the unit based within the catalog, such as opening the door, adjusting the shelf thickness, and even the shelf position. By clicking OK, we'll commit these changes and that unit will display in perspective and elevation as we have set it.